Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, launching our series on season previews 2019 with the new king of college football. All right, college football fans, lock it in right here. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Best discussion, debate, and analysis of the game we love for you, the hardcore college football fan. Let's get you set for 2019. We have provided schedule rankings, uh, recruiting updates, position previews, and much, much more than that. We are now starting our season previews better late than never. We may not get to all of them. I highly doubt that I can get to all of them, but we're going to pick off the major contenders in all the Power Five conferences. And why not start right at the top? And what we're going to provide with these season previews are not necessarily predictions. The predictions are coming. The predictions will hit the streets and hit your browser before uh, the kickoff. So don't worry about it, uh, but we're going to provide all the predictions at one time. Maybe put up the big whiteboard with all the season predictions, my conference champions in the college football playoff selections. Of course, we picked this team in orange to win the national championship in 2018, and they did not let us down. They did win the national championship. Not only won it, but won them all. 15-0, 8-0 in the ACC. We're, of course, talking about the Clemson Tigers. Look at this four-year run. Starting in 2015, when Deshaun Watson led them to a national championship game appearance against Alabama, they lost that one 45-40. 14-1, and 8-0 in the ACC that year. Then they won the national championship over Alabama, of course, in that classic game when they finished 14-1, and 7-1 in the ACC. Then the mere college football playoff appearance in 2017, losing to Alabama in the semifinal. They went 7-1 and in the ACC that year, 12-2 and overall. Finished off with a 15-0 and season last year. So it's all 55-4, and 30-2 and in the ACC. This is the dominant team like no other in college football in its conference. There are debates in every conference about who is going to emerge as champion this year, but not in the ACC. It would take a major miracle for anybody else to win the ACC this year. So the trajectory is, can it go any further and more at a steep incline up than it will for Clemson and does and has for the last seven or eight years for Debo Sweeney? They are right now Alabama good but include the fun of Dabo Sweeney. They are the chic program in college football. They are the elite at the same time as being the fun, chic program. They're the destination for the top players in college football. Yes, Alabama, Georgia, and Ohio State are recruiting just as well. But what has been both the charm and the success of the recruiting prowess is that they bring in the four and five stars but they brought in just enough three stars that have a chip on their shoulders to maintain the edge for this program, that they are not quite the elite, that they are still considered Clemson and not considered one of the Blue Bloods. And uh, the blue the chip on the shoulder has remained. Now we'll see if it remains past this 15-0 and run for the national championship in 2018. This is an amazing program. One ACC uh, competing coach, uh, anonymous coach, called it a war machine because for the last 10 years, the Clemson administration has focused on football and built it up to this point. They have been funneling money like nobody's business into this program, and it has paid off starting in about 2011 with a trip to the Orange Bowl in the ACC championship game, and they've built upon it each and every year. They started to beat teams like LSU and Ohio State and Georgia in 2011. 12, 13, 14, and then, of course, they break through to the national championship game in 2015 and knock off Florida State for the first time and tip the scales in the ACC, and they did it with these recruiting classes. In 2016, number two in the ACC, number 11 in college football, so you're not going to see the very best elite recruiting classes. Like I said, they have grabbed the four and five stars. They've developed those. Haven't uh, missed on many four and five stars. And then those three stars have really come through for them. And they have developed uh, some great football talent. Uh, 2017, number three, ACC recruiting class in 2017, number 16 in the nation. In 18, they recruited the best recruiting class in the ACC, number seven in college football. 
2019, the class that's going to play this year, number one in the ACC, number 10 in the nation, and the recruiting class for 2020, like they really need it, number one in the ACC, number one in college football. All right, the passing game for 2019 will be stellar. Probably the best in college football, Alabama, Clemson, I don't know, who do you take? The receivers are elite for both teams. The quarterbacks are the best, one and two or two and one in the nation, and uh, the offensive lines are supreme. Tua had the better season. Trevor Lawrence was the better quarterback at the end of the season after firing 30 touchdowns, only four interceptions, and he was elite. He was special in the college football playoff game against Notre Dame and then against Alabama after throwing uh, a bit scatter shot in the first quarter early, and then after that it was lights out. Weapons all over the place. Justin Ross is the elite kid who almost went to Alabama, chose Clemson, glad he did. 1,000 yards receiving, nine touchdowns, and he was really stellar in the college football playoffs. He lit up Notre Dame in particular. T. Higgins caught 59 and 12 touchdowns. Of course, Amari Rogers, he's a great talent, but he tore his ACL in the spring. But Joseph Nada and Frank Ladson are freaks. And I'm not just talking about athletic freaks. If you caught the Clemson spring game, Dabo talked about it there, and it was easy to see that these kids came into camp as true freshmen and looked like they belonged. They knew the offense immediately. They knew how to run routes. They knew how to read the coverages and break off the routes. So Clemson not only recruits elite athletes, but kids that are ready to play, that have the football acumen. Dabo says that these kids are ready. Ladson and Nada are ready to play big-time college football and contribute at an elite level, just like Justin Ross was. The running game is led by, of course, Travis Etienne, who averaged only 8.1 yards per carry and scored 24 touchdowns. And then, of course, Lynn J. Dixon is a capable backup. Capable meaning that if he was the starting running back at any other school in the ACC, he would be the number one back, and we would call him the number two back in the ACC. The offensive line during this championship run has been really good, but probably not the elite unit. Probably the linebackers and, to an extent, the secondary at times and the offensive line have dragged below the running backs, wide receivers, quarterback play, defensive line play, but still extremely good. They do miss Mitch Hyatt. I believe that that's going to be a key loss for them along the front line. The left tackle moves on to the NFL. Left guard John Simpson is probably the best player coming back uh, for Clemson. The, the offense is so rich in talent, it's ridiculous. All right, defensively, they flat out lost the best defensive line ever in college football. I would argue this with anyone. Please bring your best defensive front in college football in history. I mark this in three ways. Number one, the productivity on the field in terms of making plays. Plays in the backfield, sacks, just making disruptive plays and freeing up the linebackers and the safeties to clean it up. Number two, winning championships. We said 55-4, and four, two trips to the national championship game, make that three trips to the national title game, and two wins, four college football playoff appearances, four ACC championships. These guys just flat out won, and they cleaned it up. And then they go to the NFL draft, and the NFL draft proves that they were that good in college and project – to be that good in the NFL. So those guys are all gone. Youngsters Tyler Davis and Xavier Kelly should prove to be capable. So there's really not a drop-off in talent. Uh, actually, the kids that are on the line and going to be playing defensive front for Clemson this year in 2019 were recruited higher than the guys that they replace, the Carlos Watkins and Kristen Wilkins and Austin Bryants and Dexter Lawrences. But... Clemson loses 62% of its tackles for loss and 77% of its sacks gone. Linebacker Trey Lamar, he left early. Fortunately, Isaiah Simmons is back. He could have gone to the NFL, but Clemson very happy that Isaiah Simmons is back in the fold. At safety, Kavon Wallace, Tanner Muse, these guys came back. They could have gone to the NFL. So that is huge for this defense that at times was susceptible to um, not necessarily the deep ball, but the intermediate pass. Uh, just ask Jake Bentley, who tore him up for 500 yards passing uh, again. 
Tanner Muse coming back and Kevon Wallace, huge uh, their uh, commitment to the program and coming back for their senior seasons. I love the play of Darian Kendrick and what we hear out of camp. So wide receiver, he moves to defensive back. They needed him at corner. They were short on cornerbacks, and he instantly flips side of the ball, just walks over to the other side of the ball, and can lock down on some of the best wide receivers in the country. That's how good Darian Kendrick is, is as an athlete. They are raving about his ability to convert in the spring to cornerback and play at a high level. A.J. Terrell had three interceptions at cornerback, and of course, the national championship game pick six that got Clemson rolling. Greg Hugel is gone. He was not a great kicker, but of course, he won a lot of championships being on the team. B.T. Potter versus Steven Sawicki. That's the face-off for the place-kicking duties in replacing Greg Hugel. All right, if there are any most likely losses, uh, I'm not projecting right now. Now for this team to lose any games in the regular season or the ACC championship game. But again, my final prediction is coming before the season starts. But in order of potential losses, it would be Texas A&M at home. Of course, uh, Clemson escaped at Kyle Field last year, 28-26, on a failed two-point conversion. Jimbo, he knows Clemson personnel. He coached at Florida State. He beat Clemson. That was years ago. Going back to 2014 was the last time he beat Clemson. But Florida State always, uh, even though Clemson took over the division and the ACC and the nation eventually, Florida State always played them close with Jimbo on the sideline. And they played them close at Texas A&M last year. And Kellen Mond played a remarkable second half. So Texas A&M is not going to be intimidated by Clemson. They've been on the field with the same guys. And they played them toe-to-toe and actually outplayed them in the second half in erasing uh, an 11-point deficit. So Texas A&M would be the most likely uh, with that SEC speed and muscle and power and talent to be able to face off against Clemson, even on the road, and pull off the upset. The number two candidate is, of course, Syracuse. uh, I just think it's remarkable that this team could have beaten Clemson two consecutive years. If it wasn't for the fourth and six conversion out of the hand of John Bryce, Uh, In relief of Trevor Lawrence, uh, Clemson would have fallen to Syracuse again last year. Of course, they lost in 2017 at the Carrier Dome, and they make the return trip. Now, the only downer for Syracuse in this matchup psychologically is, of course, Clemson has been hearing for the last two years that Syracuse beat you, and Syracuse would have beaten you, outplayed you. So I think they're going to be ready for this matchup uh, early in the season, week three. Again, Syracuse coming off the Texas A&M game, and that could be the only saving grace for the Orange is that if Texas A&M pulls off the upset or if they play Clemson close and get their attention, whatever the case might be, Syracuse uh, gets to face Clemson after the Tigers have to tackle Texas A&M, and so they could be a little bit beat up uh, and have to get up for a big game two weeks in a row. The number three candidate to upset Clemson, of course, is Florida State, just based on talent. If you look at the actual recruiting rankings, Florida State is just as good as Clemson. Well, of course, they're not. And uh, Willie Taggart is going to have to show us something that he can coach this level of program uh, because his team never performed for him last year. Uh, By weeks 10 and 11 and 12, they were still uh, playing very sloppy football. So Florida State is the biggest wild card maybe in the country and certainly in the ACC because they've got the talent to win nine or ten games, but will they coming off five and seven? So the Clemson Tigers, 15-0, and 0, is very much a possibility once again. We will be back with more previews of the contending teams in the ACC right away on Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.